Welcome everyone to the next Team Bandit Gang YouTube upload. This is Enzo and I have the privilege of presenting to you The Trials of Fire, a card battler with RPG storytelling elements created by Whatboy Studios, and I will be sharing with you my thoughts and first impressions of the game. Before I start, I would just like to let you know that this will not be a guide, but rather I will just be sharing what I think about the overall gameplay. I've also invested 5.8 hours into the game according to the Steam page, and lastly, I will leave a link in the description below to the article that has been published covering this game, and that you will find more information on the game on said article. Before I start, I would like to warn all of you that this is a first impressions video and that there is a lot of elements and mechanics in the game, so don't be afraid if you feel overwhelmed because I felt overwhelmed when I first started as well, but it's relatively easy to catch on. Now without further ado, let's begin. I will admit, when I first looked at the main menu of the game, it seemed quite intimidating at first, trying to look around the main menu, which is well laid out by the way, but after going through the tutorial, the navigation became clear. The game also does a good job of showing the ropes of the game and how to play it. Feel free to pause the video as I go through each element and mechanic that is covered in the battle tutorial, in case you want a head start of how the game works before you actually start playing the game. I remember when I first started playing Slay the Spire, I was wondering what a game would look like if it was a card battler combined with RPG and storytelling elements, and voila, I see this game and I was excited to try it out. You start off as a party of three, a warrior, a hunter, and an elementalist. But you have access to more characters as you complete the objectives required to unlock them, and you travel the world with a main objective, which is to find Naya and return with news of her fate. The full premise as the following. For years, its people have lived in relative safety from the harsh conditions and monsters of the surrounding grasslands. The protection offered by the Voiders brings refugees from far and wide. A few months ago, Naya, the leader of the Voiders, left Taralin in search of a mythical artifact that could help her people by warding off the more powerful beasts of the land. However, she has not been heard from since. Without Naya and the secrets she holds, new Voiders cannot be awakened and their numbers are reducing rapidly. All that she left behind was a description of her destination, a living world town many days travel from Taralin. Expeditions have been sent trying to follow in her footsteps, but have not returned. Yours is the third such expedition to be sent out into the grasslands. You are given supplies for your journey and a map to the town that was Naya's original destination. Now at the time I am recording this video, I have not managed to complete the main objective. A part of it was because I wanted to explore the world and find out what is there to see. But even that in itself can be punishing because in the game, there is a morale system. For the longer you take to progress in the story, the lower your morale becomes. And that can come with side effects of decreasing the chances of you finding epic gear, which is always useful in RPG games whether you've played this before or not, as well as decreasing the chances of you obtaining bonus armor in battle, which is, again, useful, but you also lose the ability to redraw, which we will get to momentarily. We will first take a look at the exploration aspect of the game and I personally enjoy this. As someone who plays a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and adventure genre video games, I love being able to go out and explore the world and see what it has to offer. Unfortunately, the point I made beforehand about the morale system kind of limits my time for explorations, which irritates me a little, but I can see why that was implemented. This implementation also prevents you from just going around the map without a route in mind, as every move you make can affect you, and if you don't plan your route accordingly, it could result in negative effects during battle. Throughout the map, you come across landmarks. Most of them are marked with a question mark. These can indicate random events, similar to Skyrim when you're walking along the road and suddenly people show up to either attack you or offer you skooma. The random events can range from giving you positive effects, such as accessing the shop for weapons, armor, or materials, as well as free obsidian, which is the currency of the game, or even gaining followers, which can give you bonus effects while they are in your party, but they do not help you in battle. However, these random events can also give you negative effects, ranging from losing half your health to engaging in difficult fights, which can cost you the game if you are unprepared, to even getting injured, which is represented by adding cards to your deck that lose absolutely nothing, or even make you use up your willpower, which is the mana system, just to get them out of your deck for that particular battle. Another thing you can do in the world is rest, which is an important part as there is a fatigue system in the game. And if you allow yourself to get tired and drained, it will affect your battle capabilities by adding exhausted cards in your deck during battle. 
for someone who plays a lot of deck building and card battler games, you know that having negative cards in your deck is one of the least things you want because they can take up space in your hand when you should be seeing a card that will help you win in the tide of battle. However, in order to rest, you require food, so be sure to always stock up on food. It's also a good idea to gather some mystic herbs as well, as they give you the option to upgrade a card on your deck or remove a card from your deck. And This can be good if you want access to your devastating combos more often and have more powerful cards in your deck. Another thing you can do while resting is to upgrade your equipment using materials you gather in the world. Upgrading your items upgrades the cards that the equipment provide, which we will cover in the battle portion of this impressions video. Now I know what you're probably thinking, that's a lot to cover and I'm being honest, it, I don't think I've covered that much just yet. Wait until we get to the battle impressions which we will now do in 3. And now we move on to the battle portion. Now some of the points I made in the previous section will be covered here as well. So if you didn't understand some parts from the previous section, hopefully they will make more sense here. So. The battle element of the game is a card battler, meaning you use cards to perform actions in order to defeat your opponents. The battlefield is made up of hex tiles that represent movement for your characters. Towards the upper left corner, you see a portal-like platform that represents your willpower, the mana system of the game. And below that is an option for you to undo your last set of actions if you feel they were not the most optimized way to use those cards and actions. I know, beginner friendly, right? The left side of the screen shows your heroes, the cards in their hands and in their deck. And the right side shows your opponent's cards in their hand and in the deck as well. In the actual battle phase, you and your opponent take turns performing various actions with your respective parties. While willpower is the mana system for the game, your most important resource are your cards because not only do they provide buffs, effects, or perform attacks and defend, but you can also manipulate your hand for bonuses. For example, you can discard cards in your hand to gain more willpower to play more expensive cards. You can also use that discarded card to activate the hero that owns the card, which means you can move them to a different spot on the board, which can otherwise only be done with cards that let your hero move. And you can also use your discarded cards to redraw new ones, which costs one willpower per redrawn card and you redraw the same amount of cards that you discarded. If you already moved your hero using this effect, you can't redraw unless you discard another set of cards, or if you undo your move action and redraw instead. I would go through the cards themselves, but honestly, I think this is the easiest part of the game to understand, as reading cards give you a clear idea of what they do. Attack is attack, defend is defend, win is win, lose is lose, so on and so forth. But there are a few tips that might be useful to know. The first is the use of combo attacks, which means that if you have two heroes adjacent to an opponent, if you perform a melee attack card, any other hero that is adjacent to the targeted opponent also gives a free combo strike, which deals an additional 1 point of damage per strike. Just be careful because your opponent's units also have this bonus if you are caught fighting multiple enemy units adjacent to you. Another useful tip is the use of ranged attacks and cover. In the map, there are obstacles that can cover your units from being hit by ranged attacks, which otherwise have a far reach, but they cannot defend you from magic attacks since they can bypass obstacles. But once again, remember that your opponents have the same mechanics affecting them. However, what they can't do is undo actions if they mess up, but since they're AI controlled, they never make mistakes. Lucky. Now we mentioned buying equipment in the shops in the world exploration portion of the game, but the weapons and armor you buy do not grant any stat bonuses, as this is a card battler. Instead, they provide cards that your hero gets access to in battle, which can focus on certain synergies. An example for the warrior hero that I use is the Bone Shield, which allow her to use the Shield Bash card, a card that deals damage to a unit equal to the armor of the hero. You surround her deck to fill up with cards that give armor to the warrior, and then use Shield Bash to deal massive amounts of damage while being able to tank attacks from enemies. An early tip to you guys since I'm such a nice person. Another good card I like is the Ice Lance from the Elementalist, as the chill debuff decreases the damage output from opponent attacks and there are cards that can do double damage if an opponent already has the chill debuff on them. If any of your heroes die during any battle, you can rest to revive their health by using a Mystic Herb, which I didn't go over when I covered Mystic Herbs before because I feel it's more appropriate to bring them up here. But it would be better to keep them alive and healthy of course, because if any of them do take damage during battle, the damage stays with them until you rest. When you win a battle, your heroes upgrade, which gives you the option to upgrade one of the hero cards that they get at the start of the game, as well as potentially getting bonus obsidian, materials, and better quality equipment. And I think that covers just about the gist of the game. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is just the basics of the game. Trust me when I say there is a lot to cover, 
and I know there are some details that I may have potentially missed, which is why I'm leaving a link to the article that we at Team Bandit Gang created on our website so you can learn more about the game in detail. Personally, as someone who loves playing Gwen and Dungeons and Dragons, this game mixes the elements of an RPG adventure game as well as card battlers. So I cannot wait to play more of it when I am not busy making videos. Also, let me know what you guys think of the game. Are you excited to try it out? Did my master editing, I made air quotes. You don't see it, so just take my word for it. Interest you enough to try it yourself? Let me know in the comment section below. As well as if you want me to make videos relating to this game, I could potentially reserve one day a week where I upload variety content. And of course, subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. And other than that, this is Enzo signing out, and I will see you guys in the next Team Bandit Gang upload. And we are doing another giveaway for a subscription to the Bandit Gang YouTube channel, and the winner is... Oh, exciting! Woo! The winner is... It's you! Woohoo! Just, just activate the subscription down below. Congrats!